Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 17 of the Leap Code Daily December Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's forum for some two. For two. Uh, so, usually I start off these live, including the explanation. So, if I go a little bit slow, I, it's because I go for my thought process and not just you know go for the answer because that's sometimes not that interesting, but maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think and let's get started. Uh, okay, so you have four lists. And N is 500, uh, so you have to take an item from A, B, C, and D, and sum to, oh, sum to zero. Okay. Um, I mean, if N is less than 500, we could just have an N square algorithm. We could just take any two of these arrays, and then and th there'll be N square uh, possibilities just by a cross product. Uh, and put them in a set and then look up with the other n square. I think that's the way I would talk about it um, or think about it. Maybe I'm going too fast, uh, but it seems like it should be a straightforward problem. But yeah, and I think this is actually one of those exact things that actually is uh, more obvious in code, so I'm going to jump straight to it. Um, but yeah, but it's going to be n square time and space. Uh, so yeah, so let's just say we have, I was going to say a set, but because you have to do a count, uh, we, you know, let's do a dictionary or something like that, right? So yeah, I'm gonna do uh, counts is your uh, collections dot default dict, and in Python this just means that it it maps uh, if if you if you call this with a key that is not found, it would just default it to zero. That's basically what it does. Otherwise, you have to do this like if this key is in the the dictionary, do this thing, if not, do this other thing. So it just makes it slightly easier. Um, okay. I'm gonna try and take a look to see if I need any indexes. So I guess I don't, so I could just even go straight from uh, for eh, for x in A, for y in B, we can do counts of x plus y uh, increment by one, right? And then in a similar way, um, for x in C, for y and d, actually we should have a total as well, or total count maybe. Um, return total at the end. And what is this, right? Well, we, we're trying to find, you know, a sub i plus b sub k plus c sub k plus d sub l is equal to zero, right? Well, what does this mean? Well, we put the, diction the number of counts here in, in the previous dictionary, and that's this part, right? So that means that, uh, yeah, so everything in the dictionary is going to be this part. And here we're given this part, right? right? So basically, for this to equal to zero, um, well, let's actually just move this to the other side, right? Uh, and that's just, you know, subtract or negative of this because we subtract this on both sides. And that's pretty much it. Um, so then, we have, you know, we have x plus y, which is in this context in here, um, and we're trying to find the negative version of this to see if it's in the database. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think. So the number of counts here will give us the number of counts that's in the database, um, so we could just add to it. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's anything tricky about this. I say that and I'm gonna like probably make some silly mistakes, but Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to submit. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, I'm a little bit lazy on the testing today, though. You should test if you uh, have any doubts. But, I'm, but when you write like six lines of code, I'm a little bit confident about it. Uh, and it got accepted. So what's the complexity, right? Well, the max uh, max loop is n, right? And n is less than uh, or equal to 500 at most. So this is going to be n square here. Uh, this is going to be n square. Oops. N square here is whoops, N square here as well, and yeah, and each of these hash table lookups are all of one say, so it's going to be all of N square. In terms of space, this is going to be N square because we we put N square elements in here. Um, yeah, that's really all I have. Uh, I don't really have anything to add. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, and it's. I think the only tricky thing is just, you know, uh, practice, I think.
So what makes this easier than the other variation is that the arrays are independent. Uh, and you know the, there are variations where that's not the case and you have one array and you have to find four index. So you have to figure out the invariance because you don't want to reuse the same number uh, more than once, right? But here we have no worry about it and that's what makes this easy. Um, yeah, in a way this is pretty brute force, but I don't really have much to say about it. So definitely if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it. And maybe, you know, put in the video somehow. But yeah, uh, that's all I have. Have a good night and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.